What are you researching during the simulation? Do you still want to go to Mars after experience the simulation? Okay. Um, so I've got a few different projects that I'm working on um, for my own personal research here. Um, my uh, One of my projects is collecting data for the Astronaut Microbiome Project. And what that does is it kind of tracks... <coughs> Sorry. Um, I'm collecting data for the Astronaut Microbiome Project, and what that does is it kind of tracks how our uh, microorganisms that live on and inside of our bodies change over time while we're all together in uh, tight quarters. Um, we're doing it here because um, here we're, we're in a similar situation to the International Space Station where the actual data is being collected. So our, our data is going to act as kind of a control, you know, we're kind of in the same environment, we're together, um, we're interacting in a closed environment, but we're here on Earth in, in gravity and no radiation and all that good stuff. So the researchers who are performing the tests on the astronauts at the International Space Station can compare our data to the data that's on the International Space Station and see if uh, the changes in microbiome are just regular changes that normally happen when you're in an enclosed space or if it's due to the weightlessness and the radiation that they're exposed to up on the International Space Station. So that's an exciting project. Um, Another project that I'm working on is environmental monitoring of the habitat. Uh, so I take water samples and air samples and I, um, I, will, I, I put them on a special growth media which will cause any bacteria or microorganisms that are living in the water and air to, um, to grow. So I can count basically how much contamination is in our water and our air. And uh, so far that's proved uh, relatively, <laughs> relatively good. Um, so, so that's working out also. And um, uh, the last project that I've been working on is a microbial fuel cell. And what that does is it uses uh, microbes that produce electrons in anaerobic conditions um, to create power. And this is actually. Um, uh, one of my uh, fuel cells that I've designed. This is like, I don't know, the fourth or fifth iteration. Uh, so I actually, uh, actually 3D printed the case for this and designed it myself. So basically what we have here is um, some soil uh, that uses Martha's uh, Bokashi compost and the microorganisms that are used in the Bokashi compost are uh, electron generators. So uh, and they're also anaerobic, so that works great for a microbial fuel cell. So the soil is here, and then I've, uh, I've got a special uh, salt uh, gel in between, and then there's water on this side, and then you'll put the electrodes on either side of that, and it generates a current. And then if you take enough of these and you put them in series, uh, then you can generate enough power to power uh, an LED system or uh, a pump that will cycle water through a water filter or something like that. And so, you know, we're, we got this here anyway, so, you know, for, for us to be able to use it to create extra power, which is at a premium here, uh, it's, it's actually a really cool project. So, we're working, I'm working on that as well. So, those are my projects. So, Stir, what are your projects? 10,000 <laughs> So right now I'm doing a bunch of different projects and a lot of them are outreach based with a group of students that I'm working with in the uh, Las Vegas area. But my personal research project that I was accepted into the crew on um, is working with Tensegrity Robotics. Tensegrity is a form of soft robot where there aren't any hard connections, they're all um, compression members suspended within a tension network. Um, so those are kind of very unintuitive systems to work with. You don't have any joints like elbows or hip joints that you can kind of visualize through normal everyday experience. What you have to rely on instead is a manipulation of a tension network in order to produce a shift in the center of gravity that could initiate, initiate a rolling motion. Or you can manipulate the lengths of different tensile members in order to create a crawling motion or something like that. 
My project deals with a five, tetra, a five nested tetrahedron um, tensegrity, which basically just means that there are five little pyramids um, connected by strings that kind of inchworm along like this. So the motion that I'm going for is forward inchworm motion. Um, another motion that has been researched with this type of tensegrity is sidewinder motion, or uh, kind of how a snake slithers. So what I'm trying to do is research how I can use uh, central pattern generators to kind of adjust all of the weights on different um, aspects of the of the nested tetrahedron system in order to create the most efficient forward motion. This was something that I did in my graduate program and what I'm doing to further that research here is actually trying to create a memory system for my robotic uh, little inchworm. So what I'm doing and actually what Neil has helped me on a, out on a lot uh, with his genetics background is being able to manipulate uh, basically the genes of the central pattern generator that I found. Um, and what that does is uh, it figures out which different weights affect the motion uh, and in which different ways. So what I'm currently working on is uh, a semi-exhaustive search of the gene pattern for um, each solution that I have. And what that's gonna do is tell me how one of the different 26 genes uh, for my robot affects how it moves forward in a simulator. So I'm going to test one by one each gene, um, increasing it, decreasing it, and seeing what the outcome is on the simulation. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to give me kind of a baseline. And then when I start mutating this with other different um, solutions to the movement problem, what that's going to do is it's going to give me how different um, solutions can interact and hopefully how I can create a memory system for that type of system so that if it looks at two different parents for these gene systems, it can tell what would be good to switch and what would maybe, and what would probably be a very unsuccessful mutation or crossover within that uh, evolutionary algorithm. So it sounds complicated. <laughs> It's really not. Basically what it is, is learning how to walk. It's just doing it with a different system. So just like when you're a small child and you're learning, you fall down a lot and your body remembers what feels good and what doesn't and through that you develop your own specific gait, which is why each different human has a different walking gait. It depends on their weight and the different dimensions of their limbs. Everything like that is taken into account and that's something that you're constantly improving, constantly working on as long as you're moving around. So what I'm trying to do is teach a robot how to do the same thing. So not just teach it to walk in a certain way, but I want it to learn how to walk in the best way possible given the terrain that it has. So most important surprise discovery that we've made so far? I'm gonna stop it real quick because that was kinda long. Yeah.